Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. So, um, you guys just have completed your quiz. Okay, there's still a lot of you guys missing, uh, which is fine. I'll just continue. Um, so, you completed your quiz and um, just based on a few minutes ago, uh, I would say on average as a group, okay, on average as a group, um, you guys got in round, I think it's about A minus. Okay, so which is good. Um, well done. Even though there are some questions that are actually not covered yet in the lecture. Um, this one question that I missed, I actually missed and I actually put it there. But um, it's a general question. Anyway, this subject is about daily life. So pretty much um, what is covered here is kind of like, um, you know, at least some of it. Um, it's already been known by you guys, which is good. Okay, so um, what we're going to do today is we're just going to go through um, some of the lectures, which is I think like a little bit of the lecture left. Um, so today is about um, hydrocarbons, um, acid and alcohols. Um, and so we will have another one lecture slot, if I'm not mistaken. Unfortunately, I just knew that that lecture slot falls on the type of sum or some public holiday but it's very critical that we actually have that lecture so what i will do instead is um, i will do a recording um, since uh, anyhow uh, two weeks ago we didn't have our lecture so imagine uh, we already lost our two hours of our lecture from the flood and then um, during the first week we've already lost another two hours of lecture due to public holiday so if we have another public holiday we, we in total we will lose about six hours of lecture so there's a lot of materials that i cannot um, cover therefore uh, what i will do is just to kind of like cover up the um, in case if if uh, on the 18th i think if i'm not mistaken it's a public holiday so i will do a recording um, especially with respect to um, the topic on um, drugs and logistic drugs, um, stimulants and sexual and reproduction. So we have not touched that part at all. And that is actually part of the learning outcome of the, uh, of the uh, course. Okay. So um, by who or by crew, I still need to cover it. Therefore, I will do a recording and um, I will post it. And I'm hoping that you guys um, will actually look at it so that it will help you with your um, alternative assessment. Okay, so you will you will not have a final exam, at least for this course, you will not have a uh, final exam, and um, you, the only assessment that you have with me are the quiz just now and your summative assessment, which I will uh, also post um, next week um, during Doctor uh, Masmira's time. Okay, I will just post it. Uh, we will not have any class. Pretty much, it's kind of like an exam. Um, all the instructions uh, are there, so you just need to read through and then um, you know do the homework and submit it um, via Spectrum. Okay, so very simple. All right, so um, but of course uh, we've looked at a little bit of all these uh, small water. Um, we will look at a little bit on uh, alcohols today uh, and acid. Of course, we've looked. You've already looked at acid rain based on pre-recorded uh, last time. So we will not cover about acid rain per se, but generally about acid. Okay. So these are the topics that are left. Um, I don't think we can cover that particular section since uh, we don't have enough time even um, to cover all these three. I might think that I might actually think it's like a little bit more time. Otherwise, I need to go, just go quickly. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, and I'm hope, I hope that we, I, I will do that one. I hope that I can do a recording on that one. Definitely, I will do the recording. And I hope that you guys will view it because um, your alternative summative assessment, um, at least part of the questions are related to um, the particular topic. Okay. So, this one will most likely be uh, pre-recorded since 18 of 1 is a public holiday. If I'm not mistaken, I need to double check. Uh, I was told that it's a public holiday, so I need to kind of like do a pre plan. Okay, so um, now we are here. 
wait, we are here. Sorry, this one. Well, we, we didn't have our lecture on that one uh, due to uh, flooding. Okay, so we are here. That's that's when you, you, you just had your quiz. So we only have one lecture slot left. And this lecture slot is probably the public holiday. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it is a public holiday. Uh, if it is, then since uh, this lecture slot is um, being asked by the university for us to um, replace it, okay, so due to the flood, um, instead of not having or instead of having a holiday, um, then we need uh, that we, uh, we as lecturer we were asked to uh, kind of like replace the class. So I will replace it as a pre-recording. Okay, and then I will cover at least the topic on um, life. Okay, so that is part of the topic. If um, say after one hour uh, of of a pre-recorded lecture, we still have a lot of time. I might cover some topics that are being left out. Okay, so just just kind of like to let you guys know now. All right. So your quiz um just now is about will contribute about fifteen percent towards your final mark. Um, so far when I've looked through all the um marks that you have on average as a group, um, you get roughly about between A minus to an A. Okay, so so which is a good range. Um, and um, what's left next is your um, summative assessment in terms of alternative assessment. Um, and I will give you guys hopefully the instruction by next week, which is week 12. So you have approximately um, two weeks um, to actually complete it. Uh, well, you, you can just complete it anytime. Um, it's a very simple task, uh, even though the percentage is way bigger than the quiz that you guys just did. Okay. So this week, we're going to look at a little bit on hydrocarbons, alcohol and acids. Um, I will just probably just go through it quickly. Oh God, so the slides is automatically um, changed. All right, so hydrocarbon. Um, what is hydrocarbon? I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, if, if you guys are from science background, especially during your high school, you might have seen this type of structure, either, um, you know, your, your teacher might have drawn it like this, Okay, where you have a C in the middle, which is a representation of a carbon okay, and a H surrounding the C's, which are hydrogen. So these are the basic form of hydrocarbons. So thus the name hydro refers to the hydrogen and carbon refers to the carbon. Okay. So hydrocarbon fuels, or in, in different terms, we call it as fossil fuels, consists of multiple types of um, hydrocarbons molecules and as um, shown here is part of the uh, fossil fuels that are available or, or that are produced um, in a multiple or millions of years um, under the crust of the earth okay so uh, primarily we have a methane we have ethane uh, propane butane and uh, octane for example if you looked at um, our petroleum um, our gas that we use in our cars or um, in our uh, motorcycles okay so mostly they are from the octane category. So octane is just mean that the carbon is eight. So eight carbons, we call it as octane. Octa, not octane, octane is um, a single carbon like that with all the uh, hydrogens, okay? So octa means eight, so uh, butane is just four. So these are kind of like a normal uh, nomenclature for chemistry. And um, between all of these um, hydrocarbons fields, so octane is one of the mostly used for cars, and um, in in many many places, uh, methane is one of the other gas that we use. Okay, and um, we can easily find it in um, either if you have been in uh, to overseas, for example, if you have been to um, Japan or, or Korea or the US, the UK, you always see there. They have like a pipelines or gas pipelines uh, everywhere around, um, in the house, outside of the house, um, in the public areas. So these are the main gas. So methane is the main gas that is being used um, as a heating agent. Okay? So you use methane, you burn it, which form? Heat. Okay? Uh, heat and of course carbon dioxide. So methane is one of the uh, widely used gas. And of course, uh, based on quiz number seven, whoever got it correct, um, you do know that methane has 
a bigger impact as greenhouse gases um, than the carbon dioxide. Okay, uh, and of course, uh, because we just covered about that in this um, lecture, therefore um, I will ask two questions. Question seven, as part uh, from your quiz just now. Okay, so everybody will get like a free mark pretty much for for question seven, even though. Um, I do see many of you guys actually got it right because it's kind of like general knowledge about methane and uh, contribution to greenhouse gases. Uh, but anyhow, because it's just covered, I think it's um, fair for me to actually exclude it as part of your uh, quiz assessment. Okay. All right. So these are just some of the example. And what we will do next is we're just going to look at a little bit on... Wait, can you guys actually hear this? No, right? You guys hear the sound? No. No, no. Right. So let me check on this. Ah, I see now. Mirroring. Yes, I mirror it. And it's not playing in my computer. Stop mirroring for a while. Um, let me just join in using my iPad. Ready, guys? Take a while. Join a meeting. Is I J J S I H N I. Okay. And I'm gonna share my screen with voice. Broadcasting. Stop sharing. Okay, now should be able to hear it. Natural gas. Natural gas is primarily methane or CH4 and smaller quantities of other hydrocarbons. It was formed millions of years ago when dead organisms sucked the water of the ocean and were buried under deposits of sedimentary rock. Subject to intense heat and pressure, these organisms underwent a transformation in which they were converted to gas over millions of years. Natural gas is found in underground rocks called reservoirs. The rocks have tiny spaces called pores that allow them to hold water, natural gas, and sometimes oil. The natural gas is trapped underground by a permeable rock called a cap rock and stays there until it is extracted. Natural gas can be categorized as dry or wet. Dry gas is essentially gas that contains mostly methane. Wet gas, on the other hand, contains compounds such as ethane and butane, in addition to methane. These natural gas liquids, or NGLs for short, can be separated and sold individually for various uses, such as in refrigerants and to produce products, like plastics. Conventional natural gas can be extracted through drilling wells. Unconventional forms of natural gas, like shale gas, kite gas, sour gas, Full bed methane for specific extraction techniques. Natural gas can also be found in reservoirs with oil and is sometimes extracted alongside oil. This type of natural gas is called associated gas. In the past, associated gas was commonly flared or burned as a waste product, but in most places today it is captured and used. Once extracted, natural gas is sent through small pipelines called gathering lines to processing plants which separate the various hydrocarbons and fluids from the pure natural gas to produce what is known as pipeline quality dry natural gas before it can be transported. Processing involves four main steps to remove the various impurities. Oil and condensate removal, water removal, separation of natural gas liquids, sulfur and carbon dioxide removal. Gas is then transported through pipelines called feeders to distribution centers or is stored in underground reservoirs for later use. In some cases, gas is liquefied for shipping in large tankers across oceans. This type of gas is called liquefied natural gas, or LNG. Natural gas is mostly used for domestic or industrial heating and to generate electricity. It can also be compressed and used to fuel vehicles and as a feedstock for fertilizers, hydrogen fuel cells, and other chemical processes. Natural gas development, especially in the United States, has increased as a result of technological advances in horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing. When natural gas is burned, there are fewer greenhouse gas emissions and air pollutants when compared to other fossil fuels. In fact, 
When used to produce electricity, natural gas emits approximately half the carbon emissions of coal. Despite fewer emissions, natural gas is still a source of CO2. In addition, methane is a potent greenhouse gas itself, having nearly 24 times the impact of CO2. During the extraction and transportation process, natural gas can escape into the atmosphere and contribute to climate change. Natural gas leaks are also dangerous to nearby communities because it is a colorless, odorless, highly toxic, and highly explosive gas. That's natural gas. Okay, so that's just some information about natural gas. Um, very brief. So if you would like to re-watch it, you can just... Oops. Okay, you can rewatch it um, via this link down here. Okay, of course, this like this lecture notes will, is recorded, and I will put it up on Spectrum. So while doing your revision, if you want to look at it, then you can. Okay. Okay. So um, just look at. Let's look at one of the example of the natural gases. Um, this one is methane, CH four, one carbon, and four hydrogens. Some properties is um, uh, they are. Odorless, so you cannot smell it, even though you can actually smell gas. Okay, just a very tiny um, stink, but nonetheless, um, we, we do call it as odorless. Um, odorless, even though it's not really an odorless. Um, non toxic at low concentration, yes, at high concentration, it can kill you. Okay, and it is, it is a flammable gas. Okay, so that's an, a good example of methane. It boils at about uh, minus 161 degrees Celsius, meaning that. Uh, at our room temperature, 25 degrees, uh, it will either be a liquid because uh, oh, well, it's a boiling point is 161, negative 161, therefore it will be a gas at a room temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. Form naturally when bacteria releases, releases a single carbon atoms from digestive organic materials and occurs as marsh gas when it's not trapped by a suitable rock formation. So this is uh, like part of the uh, video just now mentioned that the methane gas is formed um, under the earth crust uh, but if you actually read through on the um, impact of uh, methane gas on the environment you do know that um, deforestation can contribute to um, increasing methane gas concentration um, agriculture for example um, farming okay because if you farm then you have more bacteria and more bacteria which is more gas Okay, so that's that's part of it, and um, it is the one of the main component for natural gas. That's the simplest one. Okay, so it's very very easily made, and it's very powerful greenhouse gases trap more than twenty five times uh, in contrast to a carbon um, dioxide. Okay, so it's it it is very very um, harmful or or like a very um, a gas that contributes a lot on greenhouse um, in increase in temperature of the earth. Okay, let's look at the second video on um, methane or uh, biogas methane production. Anaerobic digestion of waste materials such as animal and plant waste. A 
biogas plant which is moving all the all the gobar gas plant. The gas is used as a fuel. The micro dole can be involved in biogas production or a group of different species in forms a consortium. The bacteria involved in the initial stages are not strict anaerobes. Let's see the uh, process of anaerobic digestion which is accomplished by three stages. First is the solubilization, and second stage is the acidogenesis, and the third stage is the methanogenesis. In the first stage, fats, cellulose, and proteins are decomposed into soluble compounds. So, fats will be decomposed uh, by fat decomposing organism, and the cellulose by cellulose decomposing organism, and the proteins by protein decomposing organism. And all these are converted into soluble compounds. The second stage, acidic bacteria, which will convert these into organic acids. And in the stage, third stage, methanogenic bacteria, which will convert uh, the organic acids into methane, carbon dioxide, and water. The advantages of uh, biogas production is the anaerobic digestion of the municipal, industrial, and agricultural waste can have positive environmental values, since it can combine waste removal, stabilization, and the net yield of biogas population. Solid or liquid residues can be used as a fertilizer, soil conditioner, or as an animal feed. As the biomass production continues to have high priority in alternative energy sources, let's see some of the limitations of uh, biogas production. Methane, as an energy source, may have economical value at local and small scale production, but there is considerable doubt about the future of commercial large scale process for. An abundance of methane occurs in nature, particularly in natural gas fields and the oil field over this. Methane production by gasification of coal is commercially more attractive than the biogas production. The microbial production of methane is more attractive than the natural gas. The cost of storage, transport and the distribution of gaseous fuels is not very economical. And the methane produced can't be used in automobiles. So these are the uh, some of the disadvantages or the limitations of uh, biogas. Bio okay, uh, you just subscribe. That's fine. So that's the um, bit of information about methane gas production. Oh, why did it jump? So Hello, methane. Welcome on. Why did it jump? Sorry, guys. Keeps on jumping. Okay, so next one is ethane. Ethane is C2H6. Um, some properties, colorless, odorless, uh, about 30% of a natural gas. Um, you can still extract it in the same way as, um, oops, the slide is a different one. You, you can extract it from oil wells, um, as well as um, nowadays they, they actually drill specifically for um, the natural gas. So instead of previously, it's just all about petroleum um liquid now the you know the the technology has changed to consider natural gases as well okay it is gas at room temperature because of the boiling point at about minus 89 degrees celsius and um, production of ethane or ethylene um, one of the uses of um, the ethane gas is um ripening okay so um ethane is being produced by Ethane is being produced by uh, plants uh, f that wants to bear fruits. So uh, before the fruit ripes, so ethane gas is normally being released by, by the fruit itself. Um, so uh, imagine in the industrial process where you might have like a white field of, uh, for example, pineapple or, or papaya, for example. Okay. So uh, what um, farmers are doing to ensure that all the uh, fruits ripe at roughly on the same time is by um, spraying or using uh, ethylene gas to um, all the fruits. Okay, so this is kind of like one of the triggers that can be used in an agriculture industry um, to control the ripening process of fruits. So that's why you know if if you have um, some uh, farms and you have never used this what you will see is some part of the farm might have uh, more ripe, ripe fruit compared to the other parts of um, the farm. 
So um, this is why ethylene is used in the industry so that, you know, if your um, business is on selling fruits, you can control the um, ripening of the whole fruit, okay? Except for durian, I don't think durian, anyone had, uh, actually using um, ethylene to make sure the durian is right, okay? And uh, a long time ago, it is also used as one of refrigerant in cryogenic refrigerating system. So in our fridge and freezer, a long time ago, um, ethane is being used. Nowadays, um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, normally the, the chemical names start with R something, something. Um, this is because ethane also contributes as a greenhouse gases um, and it's rather reactive um, against um, uh, radical uh, chloride and whatnot. So it becomes like, a, you know, it damages our ozone. So there's a new type of gases. Uh, so normally it's fluorinated. Um, start with R, but I can't remember the code at the very back. So there's, there's multiple types of R. And um, if you purchase a new car or if your family, if you or your family have purchased a new car or purchase a new uh, air conditioning system or a new fridge, nowadays uh, they don't really use the ethane or ethylene for that matter. And they switch to this um, R type um, chemicals. I have no idea why it keeps on doing this. Okay, so um, next one is LPG. Oh, sorry, next one is LPG. Yes, uh, liquefied petroleum gas is one of the gases as well. Um, propane, boiling point of about minus 42. So again, gas at room temperature. Um, can you consider as it is colorless, but it might not be as odorless as uh, it should be. It is odorless at low concentration, but um, you know, it's not at high concentration, okay? Um, odorant is added for safety. So um, normally for um, a gas, um, for, for a propane gas, um, normally uh, odorant, meaning that something that can cause smell is added. I have yet to smell this. Um, so I, have, I cannot describe it to you how the smell is. And um, because of the relatively high boiling point it is safe or suitable for exterior storage and use but of course not just in any container it must be a high pressure container okay so it is a fuel source for domestic and commercial heating hot water and cooking so this is the primary use of um, propane gas especially in um, overseas or in places where they have uh, four climates okay so that's the general chemical equation for propane um, reacting with five mole of oxygen produces four moles of water and three moles of carbon dioxide so for a complete combustion probably it's better for me to just go to the slide one by one here okay so next one is um a butane sorry i'll just zoom it a little bit okay um same thing, uh, it's colorless gas, faint petroleum-like odor. Um, I think everybody have used cooking gas previously, or at least at home you have, hopefully you have helped your parents uh, to cook whatever it is, um, eggs or um, anything, or rice, for example. Um, fried rice, not just rice. Okay, so boiling point is about minus one degree Celsius. Um, cannot be used for camping under cold condition. Um, cold condition here, meaning that it is less than one degrees, of course, um, at freezing or about two or three degrees, you can still use it, not the best, but it is still uh, feasible to use it. Um, it's fuel, it is the fuel in cigarette lighters, uh, where it is normally under pressure, so that's why um, if you have uh, purchased the um, kind of like, um, what do you call it, um, the, the gas top up for the cigarette lighter, Okay, so you normally you will see it as a liquid um, and when you actually uh, refill it up, then normally you will hear hissing sound due to the pressure from the gas. Okay, so next one, um, I'll just quickly go to it uh, because you can pretty much read it. It's very basic. I'm not going to go in very detail. So uh, next one is alcohol. So alcohol is another type of organic um, groups. Okay, so the functional group for an alcohol, so alcohol is a name of um, as, as um, normal people. Alcohol normally refers to like beer, wine, spirit, um, 
Uh, but in chemistry, alcohol is another group of chemicals that has a distinct functional group called as hydroxyl or OH. Okay. So, um, and aliphatic carbon atoms in chemistry are called written as ROH. That's the general representation, just simply R, O, and H, where R is an alkyl group. And alkyl group means here is anything that, that is attached to a carbon. So, for example, if you have a structure like that, so each one of these, uh, the middle point here represents a carbon, okay? And each carbon will need to satisfy four uh, bonds for a single normal carbon. Okay, so you have hydrogens um, all around here. Okay, and um, you can have OH at the very end. So this is a type of alcohol. So regardless of the structure, if the structure um, goes something like this, this is still alcohol and these are still called as aliphatic um, carbon, even though or alkyl group, aliphatic group. So there's, there's a lot of uh, technologies. Um, but these are some examples of uh, aliphatic. So you know that at the end here, you can have either a hydrogen or a carbon. If it's a carbon, then the carbon is to fulfill four bonds. Then you will need to have another three hydrogens so that the carbon will have one bond over here and then another three bonds on the hydrogen. So you get four bonds, which makes the carbon happy. Okay. Um, additionally, you can have another carbon over here. It's the same thing as what we see here. So CH3 just to fulfill it you can have ch2 and so on and so forth so these are kind of like the structure of um alkyl group so alkyl means just another hydrocarbon um and even if something like that you can still call it as an alkyl group because of the carbon uh, there's no hydrogen there the hydrogen has been replaced by uh, fluoride but it is still um, acceptable okay So some classification of alcohol. Alcohol can be classified into three categories. So you have um, a primary um, alcohol, secondary alcohol, and tertiary alcohol. What are the difference uh, in chemistry? The difference, well, in general practice, um, you don't really care. But as a chemist, what we use, um, we, we normally use a specific type of alcohol because it has a different reactivity. So in chemistry, we build uh, molecules, we build our own um, kind of like structures, okay? So uh, depending on what you want to do, you might want to change, um, you know, you might want to use a different type of alcohol. For example, uh, a tertiary um, alcohol here is very, very susceptible to um, a, a nucleophile attack, okay? Or all of them are, are nucleophile attack, but um, this one in chemistry is more about you know, elimination process. Um, and that one over here, primary alcohol, is more on nuclear free attack or substitution process. So there's, there's a lot of chemistry um, behind the different types of um, alcohol. Okay? So we're just going to look at um, some examples of this alcohol. Okay? So uh, methanol, so if you look at here, methanol, ethanol, propanol, and uh, can be one propanol or two propanol. So these are the common names of alcohol that you might have heard. Um, even ethanol and methanol are very, very common in... Uh, if you go to Ace Hardware, for example, you can you, you can find it very easily. Okay, So the normal culture itself, um, it says here, alcohol with one to four carbons are uh, okay. frequently called as common name. Okay, So th these are the common ones, but you do have different types of alcohol. Okay, So it can be, for example, methyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol, propyl alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. So isopropyl alcohol is the one that we normally see in uh, what we call it as a rubbing alcohol. So rubbing alcohol is like that. Okay, so we have something like this, so alcohol swab, um, the wipes that the doctor use before you get your um, COVID, uh, COVID vaccine. So normally doctors or nurses will just rub this isopropyl alcohol uh, before they inject it into your body. Why? Because um, this kills cells and bacteria, and it can kill you. If you drink it, then you will die, definitely. But at the same time, um, it is very safe um, at a low quantity. Okay. All right. So the, according to the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, um, IUPAC, so that is the international governing body 
for pure and applied chemistry. Okay, I call a name changing uh, name by changing the ending of the parent alkene name to an all. So alkene name, for example, just now we looked at methane. Okay, so in name. So if it's alcohol, then it becomes methanol. So, right, so this is just an, an example. Of course, there's no more quiz for you guys. So this is more of uh, a general um, knowledge, okay, uh, for you guys to understand a little bit about chemistry, about the naming of chemicals. Okay. So these are some other examples of alcohol. So on the most left-hand side, uh, the um, structural formula of that particular alcohol. And you can see here that is the class. So the ones that we've looked at, primary, secondary, and tertiary. So the difference is, if you go back to the first structure, okay, if you look at here, oops, this structure, the difference is, if you look at the carbon that is attached to the hydrogen, okay, probably go to primary first, okay, so you have another two hydrogen attached to the same carbon. So a minimum of two, this is what we call as a primary alcohol. So of course, if you have a C and O with three H's, you still call it as a primary alcohol. Okay, as long as you have a minimum of two hydrogen attached to it, we call it as a primary alcohol. Once you have um, one, it straight away goes into a second degree alcohol, secondary alcohol. And once you do not have any hydrogen, it becomes a tertiary alcohol. Okay, that's the basic nomenclature. So if you look at here, primary alcohol, then you know that the OH attached to the C has another two, a minimum of two um, hydrogens. Same thing, primary, another two, secondary, now it becomes one. Okay, that one over there. And then a secondary has no alcohol. So this alcohol, oh wait, secondary is the same. Uh, tertiary has no um, alcohol. So you can see the carbon over here that is attached to the OH, has no extra hydrogen. So that's a tertiary. Um, however, a structure like this is considered as secondary because in chemistry, um, hydrogen uh, attached to a carbon can be excluded from drawing. So, but you still need to fulfill the criteria that um, a normal carbon likes to have four bonds. So if you um, count the number of bonds for this particular um, cyclohexanol, okay, you can, so that one is a carbon. So you know the carbon has only one, two, and three bonds now. So the fourth one must be hydrogen. Okay. So that's why this structure, a cyclohexanol, is considered as a secondary and not a uh, tertiary alcohol. Okay. So these are the common names. Um, you don't have to memorize. It's just a basic information for you guys. And this is the IPAC name, uh, name which is used in um, throughout the world. Okay, so if you talk about uh, two butanol, everybody knows, or at least if you're a chemist, then you know what two butanol is. But if you say if you say um, secondary butyl alcohol, uh, if you go to China, um, normally it's in China. I know that some of my friends they use a different name for chemicals. Uh, so um, that's what we call as a common name. Uh, but the IPAC name is a standard name that is being used um, worldwide. We still have a lot of like, notes. We have about 20 more minutes. Okay, next one, um, let's look at a few examples. Uh, first one is methanol, it's physical property. Um, some of the information, the chemical formula is CH4O or you can write it out as CH3OH. It's fine, either it's fine. Um, molecular mass is about 32.04 gram per mole. Um, boiling point is 148.5 Fahrenheit or 64.7 degrees Celsius. So at room temperature, since the boiling point is higher than the, the room temperature, then it will become a um, gas, or oh, sorry, a liquid. Okay, so, uh, and if you look at the melting point, it's about minus. So if you go below, minus 97.6 degrees Celsius, then it becomes a solid. So just a refresher about boiling point and melting point. So the first one is a melting point. So this one is a solid, liquid, and gas. Okay, melting point, melting point, and boiling point. 
So if say, um, and the way by which you can know whether a material is a solid, a liquid or gas is by looking at the boiling point and the melting point of that particular uh, molecule and think about at room temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so pick a, uh, do a graph like this and then um, look at 25 degrees Celsius um, and list down what is the melting point, what is the boiling point. So in this case, for example, the melting point is 97, minus 97, and the boiling point is about 65. So if you think about 25 degrees Celsius at a room temperature, if you put it in, because 25 is in the middle of the boiling point and middle point, therefore the um, phase meta, uh, meta phase for uh, methanol at room temperature will be a liquid. Okay. So similarly, if you have a, a boiling point of minus um, 95, 65, so um, you need to adjust where is the 25 degrees Celsius, so it's somewhere around up here, then you know that uh, that particular uh, gas or whatever it is at room temperature would be a gas. So this is how, um, if you have not learned chemistry at all, um, this is how you can know whether uh, the specific molecule will be a, a gas or liquid or solid at room temperature. Okay. Um, vapor pressure is about 13 kilopascal. Um, again, one atmospheric pressure is 101 kilopascal. Okay, so vapor pressure meaning that if you have a beaker, okay, without doing anything, what is the uh, kind of like the amount of gas that is being produced by liquid methanol? So it's about 13 kilopascal, not as high as atmosphere, atmosphere pressure, uh, vapor pressure. So if it goes above, say, uh, 200 kilopascal, then you know that there's a lot of methanol has uh, evaporated and it is because it is uh, higher than atmosphere, then you can see that almost 100% of the room particularly um, has been covered or has been filled with uh, methanol gas. Okay, So methanol is colorless, um, it's volatile, meaning that it can evaporate even though the boiling point is at 64.7 degrees Celsius. Volatile means it can evaporate, okay? it can form gas. Um, it's highly flammable, uh, mild smell, I have no idea what mild smell means, but you, know, it, you can smell it, and it's almost tasteless in liquid, in contrast to an ethanol where it's a bit uh, pungent, so to say, uh, methanol is a bit tasteless. Right, so um, these are some of the hazards of methanol, so um, if you look at the, the diamond structure over here, uh, the flame structure says that it's flammable, it's highly flammable. Um, uh, a skeleton structure means it's very toxic, okay? And um, a structure with a star in, in, in the um, body figure means that um, it can cause harm by inhalation, okay? So, um, so that's why it says it's vaporized, so easily volatile, as I mentioned. And um, yeah, so do not smell it. Okay, so response if swallowed, then quickly call poison center. We do have a poison center in Penang, even though it's not in Slango. Um, or pretty much just call the ambulance if you ac accidentally drink it. If you inhale it, um, simply because inhalation is not at high concentration, so you can just go to a place where you have ample of fresh air. So you just go out of a building, for example. Okay, if it's on the skin or the hair, you can just wash it plenty of. Uh, water, it does not um, enter your body very, very quickly. It can, but it's not very, very quick. So if, if you do get an ethanol, methanol splash on your body, you can just simply go to a safety shower or just go run to the toilet and wash it. Okay. So um, and as a warning, this product contains a chemical known of state of California to cause birth defects and other reproductive harm. So if you looked at, if, if you want to know um, a chemical uh, properties of a chemical, you can just type in um, the easiest way nowadays because we have Google. You can just type in the name of the chemicals on Google and then just add this um, uh, kind of like word SDS. So SDS means safety data sheet. So this is where you can find a lot of information about the uh, particular chemicals. Okay. So uh, methanol is also used um, in transport transportation fuel, of course, it's not 100%. Normally, you mix it, um, either ethanol or methanol, with the octanol, 
Octa, not Octanol, sorry. Um, um, octane, Octanol. Okay, so you mix it with an octane um, so that you can reduce the amount of emission cost, but at the same time, it will not um, affect the energy is being produced by the engine too much. So it's kind of like an average. Okay, so that's one use. Um, second use, uh, wastewater denitrification. Okay, it's a process where nitrates are metabolized by nitrifying bacteria to free nitrogen and return to the atmosphere. So this uh, methanol is part of the byproduct of this process. Okay. Um, uh, denitrification, we do not cover it here. It's a very, very huge process. If you are interested, then you can just simply um, like search it on the web um, and th there are a lot of information about denitrification. Okay? So that's part of a nitrogen cycle. If you go into a bit more detail on how, you know that our atmosphere, we have about 77% of nitrogen. So how does this nitrogen is being used by ourselves in the body because our body is made up of a lot of by proteins. Proteins contain a lot of nitrogen. So how does the atmosphere from the outside actually being converted into nitrogen that we can use as a human being? Okay, you can Google nitri nitrification. It talks about the cycle process um, of nitrogen in the atmosphere, going to the soil, going to bacteria, going to the plants, eating by animals and eating by us. So that's how we generally get our nitrogen. Okay. So next one is ethanol, um, some physical properties, uh, formula C2H6O, molecular mass about 46, boiling point, um, again, boiling point and melting point. So at room temperature, ethanol will be a liquid. Okay, so that's how you actually um, see ethanol if you haven't seen it. A density of about 789 kilogram per meter cube. Okay, so um, a density of um, okay, kilogram per meter cube. It's colorless, uh, volatile, again, easily evaporate, highly flammable, slightly chemical order. Um, ethanol tastes bitter and sweet, depending on your tongue. And that is the general structure of an ethanol with two carbons and one OH group. Okay. So we still have um, more. So ethanol or ethyl alcohol is what um, the general public call as an alcohol. So you have it in, in beer, in multiple types of, um, um, what do you call it? Um, yeah, pretty much, okay. So um, for example, in beer, you have about 5%. In a normal, uh, this one is malt liquor, is about 7%. In wine, you have 12%. Um, in hard liquor, whiskey, gin, rum, vodka, and whatnot. Um, well, vodka, some vodka that I've seen has 70% of alcohol content. So depending on, and the alcohol here always refer back to uh, ethanol. Okay, so it's not alcohol, any alcohol. It's always refers back to alcohol. I'm just gonna uh, skip on that. This is not me. Okay, so let's look at a little bit on effect of alcohol in your body. Uh, oh, it's not, it's not clean. Okay, so generally alcohol um, affects a lot on your brain. Um, of course, if you have done any experiment on fermentation, okay, whereby you have a sugar, for example, you can actually do it at home. You have a sugar, take sugar, a little bit of sugar, uh, put it in a cup, um, put a little bit of water, mix it so that it becomes like a um, sticky, sticky sugar type, and then just add in yeast. That's the simplest way by which you can produce an ethanol at home. Okay, so from there you can actually, uh, if you actually uh, learn about science in your high school, and perhaps if you have done the experiment, you can know that yeast will produce up until about um, maximum of twenty percent of alcohol. Um, higher than that, the yeast will start to die. Okay, so um, similarly for humans, um, a high concentration of alcohol will definitely kill you. But if you think about all the, for example, the vodka, 70% alcohol, why doesn't it kill the person who actually drinks it? Drinks it is because the alcohol to the other day, when it gets absorbed into your body, it will be diluted. Okay, so uh, it will be diluted. Therefore, 
you kind of have, have um, an impact on your brain. It will affect the receptor, uh, neurotransmitter, um, but it doesn't really kill you if you just drink it once. Uh, but if you do drink a lot of a vodka, a high concentration of alcohol towards the other day, it will kill your own cells and perhaps definitely will, will affect your uh, body in the way of your think. Um, pretty much if, you, if it affects your brain, then it will affect everything in your body okay so ethanol in bread uh, so this is the example that i mentioned uh, we can simply just take sugar um, combine it with yeast put a little bit of water you can actually produce um, you can see the solution gets will form bubbles okay so the bubbles is um, carbon dioxide and at the same time you are producing um, alcohol okay so similarly in bread making you actually do produce alcohol However, the alcohol produced will easily evaporate um, due to the, um, you know, when you make a break, you need to burn it, right? So when you burn it, the alcohol will easily get evaporated and thus the bread that you get is free from any um, ethanol, so to say, or alcohol generally. Okay, so I think that's all for today. I'll just do this as part of um, the pre-recorded lecture. Um, and in combination to the live lectures that I'm going to um, do. Okay, so I hope that you guys can have a look. Um, and next week, again, just to recap, I will um, hopefully by that time, I will have a feedback um, and thus I, will, I can give you guys the um, questions or, or the for your assignment that will contribute towards your final exam. Okay. So I think that's all for today. Um, thank you. Oh, just by the way, last one, um, just on average, um, by looking at the marks that you guys get, so on average, you do get an average of A. Um, so well done. Uh, congratulations. It seems like this subject is very easy for you guys. So uh, well, unfortunately, if I were to teach this subject again next semester, I will do it differently. Okay, so this one um, initially is not my subject. So I'll um, I'm kind of like a bit intelligent to the subject because the lecturer that's supposed to teach the subject um, had a family problem, so he quit. Um, thus, I was given the task to take over um, just a few days before the lecture actually starts. So, I uh, apologize because there are a lot of kind of like um, drawbacks, okay, um, limitation in terms of the content, the depth that I'm teaching. Um, I remember you guys initially say that it's very deep, especially in terms of when you're talking about all the um, bonds and whatnot. Um, so if I were to teach it again, I will probably do it in a slightly different manner um, so that at least your junior can benefit from the feedback. Okay, so and uh, last one, starting from today, uh, you can already access a C test um, and you can give me feedback on this particular course. So that hopefully I can improve a little bit where I need to uh, in case if I were to teach it again in the next coming semesters. Um, last but not least, um, thank you and um, stay safe. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, thank, you, doctor. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Bye. Thank you, Doctor. Bye.